Archaeologists were shocked to discover a giant gold statue in Rome. The researchers also managed to find out the composition of ancient Roman perfume, and in China, archaeologists were in for a surprise that will delight historians from all over the world. Watch this video until the end, you will definitely enjoy it. Hi friend, you're on the Curtop channel. The Composition of Ancient Roman Perfume Today we will go on an exciting journey into the past. Imagine, we are researchers from the University of Cordoba and for the first time, we managed to find out the composition of Roman perfumes, which are more than 2,000 years old. It all started in 2019 in the municipality of Cordoba, where archaeological finds were discovered during the restoration of a building. The workers turned to the city administration and what did they find? The mausoleum is 2,000 years old, with eight niches, all in excellent condition. The remains of six members of a wealthy family were buried in a common tomb, and there were many different items on them, including a quartz container with solid contents. A quartz amphora was something unusual because usually such vessels were made of glass, and quartz is a fairly hard and durable material, so it was an expensive and very rare item. But the most amazing thing was inside the amphora, it was an ancient perfume that survived thanks to the good sealing of the vessel. A team from the University of Cordoba, led by Professor Jose Rafael Ruiz Arabal, analyzed this perfume, which is over 2,000 years old. Their findings were published in the scientific journal Heritage. The researchers used a variety of techniques to determine the composition of the perfume, including X-ray diffraction and gas chromatography. The composition of the perfume was two components, the base or binder, which helped to preserve the fragrance and the essence itself. In our case, olive oil was used as the base. Interestingly, according to the results of the analysis, ancient Rome smelled of patchouli, an essential oil obtained from a plant of Indian origin, Pagosiman cablin. It is widely used in modern perfumery, but its use was unknown in Roman times. So guys, this is how science decipher the secrets of the past and give us the opportunity to to smell the aroma of ancient Rome. If you had the opportunity to get real jewelry or perfumes from the ancient world, not to sell and make money on it, but to wear or keep a home as a souvenir, then what would it be? Jewelry from which ancient empire do you like best? Ancient Egypt, the Roman Empire, or jewelry from China? Write in the comments below the video and be sure to subscribe to the channel if you have not done so before. Unusual Punishment of Criminals Today I will tell you about an ancient Chinese punishment that will make you wince. But first, let's take a look at this photo. Do you see the fear and bleeding in this man's eyes? This powerful shot was taken by Scottish traveler John Thompson in China. The characters in the photo say, sealed by the Shanghai County Magistrate. The punishment is known as Kanga. By the way, this word came to us from French and means yoke. Yes, the same thing that they put on bulls, but in East Asia, on people. Kanga is a large wooden collar worn around the neck of those guilty of crimes. It weighed from 9 to 17 kilograms and could have different shapes and sizes. Some were made so that a person could eat themselves, but other Kangas limited access to the mouth. In these cases, the person was completely dependent on the kindness of others. Without help, they could not even eat or drink. Kanga was appointed for petty crimes such as theft, but this was not the only punishment. Before putting on the Kanga, the prisoner was usually beaten with bamboo sticks and then they were shown to all the people for public humiliation. It appears that Kanga was an Asian version of the European pillory. People with Kangas around their necks were always brought to the show when the officials came. Sometimes even the officials themselves were punished by the Kanga. Wearing it could last from several days to three months depending on the crime. For example, for repeat theft, the thief received 60 blows with a stick and 20 days with a kanga around their neck. If something valuable was stolen, the punishment became even more severe. For every 10 strokes, another 5 days of wearing the kanga were added. So think twice before doing something bad and remember, in the past, crimes were paid a much more serious price than today. Gilded Statue of Hercules Here's a story that any archaeologist will tell with delight. Imagine that you are digging a hole in the heart of Rome and then 
boom, a huge bronze finger sticks right out of the ground. It happened in 1864 in the Campo de Fiori Square, when workers were working to strengthen the foundations of the ancient palace of Palazzo Piorigati. Having come across a huge wall and columns, they continued to dig deeper and deeper, and here a bronze finger was in the ground. So big you might think it's from a monster, but who could have expected that an entire statue was hidden underground? Archaeologists, of course, continued to excavate, and soon they found the rest of the statue, a huge bronze Hercules and a bronze lion, which Hercules defeated. But the statue was damaged, its feet were missing and there was a hole in the back of its head. Why was it there? In Rome, there were many beliefs, and one of them said, if lightning strikes something, that it must be quickly buried because the gods do not like it. Apparently, lightning struck the statue and drilled through the back of its head. Therefore, the inhabitants of Rome decided to bury it. And what about the walls and columns that the workers discovered? It turned out to be an ancient theater built by Pompey. It cunningly bypassed the ban on the construction of theaters in Rome, first building a temple and then attaching a theater to it. By the way, now there is a restaurant where you can feel like a real Roman. As a result, the statue of Hercules was restored and placed in the Vatican. So if you're going there, be sure to take the time to have a look. Cosmetic Spoon with Naked Girl Raise your hands, those who love jewelry and face masks. What if I told you about a piece of jewelry that also held your favorite scented oils? Let's take a trip back to the time of ancient Egypt, where there lived a girl who could become a top model today. This girl is actually a cosmetic spoon made of ivory and ebony and painted in vibrant colors. It was a special kind of spoon used to hold cosmetics or essential oils. In fact, it was a whole tradition in ancient Egypt during the 18th and 19th dynasties. Our little model has been carved to look like a pink lotus flower with a lid that can be opened and closed. Her face is adorned with a black ebony wig and her neck is adorned with a lotus petal necklace. She wears a tattoo in her waist and dwarf gods are depicted on her hips who protected the house and family. This cosmetic spoon was found in Thebes in the early 1900s and is now in Moscow at the State Museum of Fine Arts named after Pushkin in the whole The Art of Ancient Egypt. And if you notice, our spoon girl has very long legs. In ancient Egypt, art often depicted women with disproportionately long legs. This was a kind of beauty standard of that time. Who knows, maybe they were the first models in the world. Neolithic Farmer Skeleton a unique discovery happened right in the middle of a city in Poland. This is a story that will affect you because it affects the story of the person themselves. Slomniki, a small town in Malopolska Wojewodzie, Poland, became the site of an amazing discovery. Imagine you are renovating a city square and suddenly you find a complete human skeleton. But it's not just a skeleton, this skeleton is about 7,000 years old. And what's the most wonderful thing? The skeleton was found in perfect condition, and pieces of ancient pottery were found next to it. They appear to have belonged to a culture known as the linear culture. You may be asking how it could be that the skeleton was left in such excellent condition. It was buried in very peculiar soil, which helped preserve it. Scientists want to conduct a special test called radiocarbon dating. This will help them find out exactly when that person lived. Now they don't even know who they were, but there are some assumptions. Scientists think that this man could be a Neolithic farmer who crossed the Carpathians and ended up in Poland. But what's really remarkable is that we still know so little about this ancient culture and their burial customs. That is why each such discovery is an opportunity to look into the past and learn more about those who lived before us. The Horror of the Underworld of Osiris Today we will go on an exciting journey to ancient Egypt, where we will unravel the mysteries of the mysterious Book of the Dead. Some might think, the Book of the Dead? Is this some kind of detective story or a horror movie? But in fact, this is a collection of texts that help the dead cope with difficulties in the world on the other side of life. The Egyptians believed that after death we will travel to the underworld, which they called the Duat. It was a kind of country of death, consisting of 14 zones. Imagine the long and difficult road that must be traveled to reach eternity. But even after death, we need rules, right? This is where the Book of the Dead comes in. It's like an instruction for the dead, written on sacred papyri, sarcophagi, and even on the burial shrouds of mummies. 
These texts contain special spells and magic formulas that help overcome all the difficulties of the path. If a diseased person lived a good and honest life, their soul passed through all the zones of Duat without any problems and reached eternity. And now the most interesting part. Upon arrival at the Hall of Two Truths, the soul will be judged. And not by any court, by Divine One, headed by Osiris himself. The judgment takes place in the form of weighing the heart and the scales against the father, the symbol of truth. And if the heart turn out to be heavier than a feather, then the soul met the terrible monster Amit, consisting of parts of three dangerous animals a crocodile, a lion, and a hippopotamus. This death-eater beast took away hearts burdened with sins and the soul came to an end. So guys, the Book of the Dead is not just a set of texts. This is a real guide to the world beyond life, a map of the road to eternity. Remember, even in the afterlife, it is worth being honest and kind. Shipwrecks of the Min Dynasty the following story is reminiscent of a treasure movie. At a depth equal to the height of five Eiffel Towers, the remains of two ships were found in the South China Sea. And these are not just ships, but ancient Chinese ships belonging to the Min Dynasty, which ruled China from 1368 to 1644. This is the first time in history that China has discovered such a unique find in the underwater depth. Scientists from the Chinese Academy of Sciences believe that this find is important not only for China, but for the entire world of archaeology. This can help us learn more about the Silk Road, which was the main route for trade between China and other countries. Both ships are thought to have sunk in the late 15th or early 16th century and were found at a depth of 1,500 meters. Inside, they found a huge amount of cargo. The first ship was carrying about 100,000 items, mostly porcelain dishes, while the second was loaded with wood. And the most amazing thing is that the ships and their cargo are perfectly preserved. Thanks to this, scientists were able to easily determine what time this find dates back to. Among the discovered dishes, there are different types of porcelain and ceramics, including rare ceramics with green glaze. This find is a big breakthrough in the history of trade and culture of China at that time. Now ship research continues, and it may bring many more amazing discoveries. So guys, let's follow this exciting archaeological adventure together. 12 Painted Tombs of the Grandson of Genghis Khan Imagine that you are a brave archaeologist and you have just made an amazing find in the eastern part of China, in the Shandong province. Your team has discovered as many as 12 ancient tombs, decorated with breathtaking paintings and carvings. Their age is about 700 years. These tombs are the real treasures of the Yuan dynasty, founded by the Mongol Khan Kublai Khan, who was the grandson of the great conqueror Genghis Khan. It is important to know that this find has become one of the most significant for this part of China. According to an inscription found in the burial complex, the tombs belong to the Guo family. But the most surprising thing was discovered by archaeologists in one of the tombs where there were two burial chambers. There, magnificent paintings and frescoes made of carved bricks invaded them. These designs were hand-carved with chisels and wooden hammers. Until now, on these frescoes you can see herons and tree branches, symbols of good luck in Chinese culture. But that is not all. More than 60 items were found in the tombs, including earth were in porcelain dishes, bronze mirrors, copper coins, and other valuable artifacts. This will give scientists new insights into the culture and production of porcelain during the Yun dynasty. From world fame to poverty I will tell you about the famous jeweler and founder of one of the most famous jewelry companies in the world, Fabergé. What do you think that makes them so special? That's right, these are their incredible Easter eggs that were made specifically for the Romanov family. Karl Fabergé himself took over the reins of the family company at a young age when he was only 24 years old. With the help of his education and experience, he was able to take responsibility for the prosperity of the family business. Under Karl's direction, the jewelers created unique items that included not only Easter eggs, but also watches, medallions, cigarette cases, writing instruments, and more. They worked not only for the richest people, but also for the middle class. But everything changed when the First World War began. 
Instead of creating magnificent products, the Fabergé company began to fulfill military orders. The 1917 revolution changed the life of Karl Fabergé even more. Instead of the aristocracy, ordinary people became customers, soldiers and sailors, and despite the difficulties, Karl continued to do business until the fall of 1918. Knowing that nationalization was coming, he decided to hide his valuables. He handed over his treasure, a safe, the contents of which were estimated at more than 7 million in gold rubles for safekeeping in the Swiss embassy. But something went wrong. In the same night, the safe was moved to the Norwegian embassy, which was robbed. The old jewelry was left without a livelihood, and he had to emigrate. From the huge fortune, which was estimated at 45 million, there was only one bag with clothes and several products. Already ill, Carl decided to take a vacation in Switzerland. One day he decided to break the rules and smoke a cigar, which led to his sudden death. That was the story of Carl Fabergé, the famous jeweler, a story of great talent and hard times. And remember, each Fabergé product is not just a beautiful object, it is a story embedded in each precious stone. And to learn even more stories from the ancient world and see other archaeological finds, subscribe to our channel and write a kind comment under the video. Thanks for your views. Bye, everyone!